So one thing I want to start with is just kind of how to explore things, figure things out, try and understand how some of the objects are set up, um, and just find what function something might have if you don't have the source code. Um, <coughs> sometimes it's just easier to print out some stuff real quick than dig through the cheat engine source code, especially if you just don't know Pascal or, you know, Delphi. Um, but admittedly, yeah, if you can learn to read that stuff a bit, it's a lot more helpful to go through the cheat engine source because you'll, you'll actually find stuff a lot easier and understand things that this function won't even output. It just, it's not a bulletproof thing. Um, there are some race conditions for it, uh, conditions where you can get stuck in infinite loops. Basically, if you have, um, say, like a, a table one, um, and then inside that table it has a table two, and then inside table two there's a reference to table one, it will get stuck in an infinite loop and you won't even be able to close cheat engine. Um, so I would definitely suggest if you do use this function to always save before you do anything with it. Um, most objects you're really not going to have a problem with that. The only time I've actually had that happen is when I deliberately made a table to do that to see if it would do it or not, and it absolutely does. Um, I had to force Cheat Engine to close. It just it wouldn't respond at all. It was just stuck in an infinite loop and wouldn't come out of it. Um, so keep that in mind if you're going to use this. Um, there are some scenarios where it won't print everything. If you pass it to nil objects, it'll only print the first nil object um, because it doesn't see the rest as even existing. Whereas if you actually pass it, say, a string, nil, string, it'll print string, nil, string and tell you what each one of those things are. Um, so if you have and and if you have a key set to, uh, say, you have a table with a key named value set to nil, it won't print that just because of the way these underlying parts of this function work. I mean, when it calls pairs on a table, it just, that function won't pull anything that's nil. I, I may not even have access to it. That might just be something that's a part of Lua. Um, the only reason why this will print some, you know, if you pass it multiple objects at once, is just because of the way it'll know that there's a blank spot in that table you know it'll have index one index you know index one is something and then index two is nil so it'll print nil and then index three is something um, but if it does end with an index you know so you have string nil string and then another nil it won't print that last nil so there are some scenarios where you're better off just passing it a single object so you can know whether that was actually nil um, and I use this function sometimes when debugging, and that's where printing nil is just helpful, so that way you can know, okay, I screwed up somewhere and cleared this variable, or it's not being set correctly, or whatever the case may be. We'll go over that a little bit more, uh, but basically I just wanted to give access to this function. Um, I'll put this in a snippet on the Fearless Cheat Engine forum, um, so you don't have to type the whole thing out. But I just wanted to go over some basic things on how to use it. Um, and it'll be highlighted just because some of the modules or plugins I've got set up end up actually calling this helpers file. So you'll see it's already highlighted before we even run it. And that's just because it's already been run. Um, but for you, it won't be highlighted until you actually run it the first time. So if we go ahead and paste that into the Lua engine um, and then call it on the main form, which would be the cheat engine form here, um, we'll get some output here. And like I said, this isn't bulletproof. So you'll notice uh, with a user data object, which is, which is what the main form is, um, and basically it means there's other code that sets this up, creates this, not pure Lua. And I, that's not 100% either. Um, 
but in the context of Cheat Engine, anything that's user data is pretty much just coming from the Pascal or Delphi or maybe even C. Um, but at any rate, you'll notice that uh, everything is either a function or a table. There is no even name. And that's because it actually, it's an object as far as Lua sees it, and it just has setters and getters. Um, those don't print out, but it's just kind of the underlying way with the meta tables. Like I said, it's not a 100% bulletproof function to use. There is a um, inspect.lua um, that can be, it, it's more robust with just pure tables. It just won't print anything for user data. It'll just throw an error on that, I think it was. Um, but that one actually won't get stuck in any um, loops. Uh, it doesn't have the race conditions like mine does. Um, so it is a useful one to use. Um, and I keep it around just because sometimes it's better to use it. Um, so that's another good one you might even try. Uh, this one you can just literally just look up Lua Inspect and uh, you'll find this GitHub repository with this one file in it and you can download it and stick it in your uh, either auto run folder if you want or or import it and you know that kind of thing. Um, but at any rate, I do, like I, like I said, I've got this custom function I use just so that way I could explore different things. Um, and then there is a second one here that uh, is just a win control print. Um, not the greatest thing in the world. Um, there have been times where it just does not work for me and I, I can't. I have tried and tried and tried to make it as robust as humanly possible, but it just isn't a hundred percent, but it does print out stuff for an object like this a little more neatly. If you're not wanting to find every function, every little thing, it'll just tell you what controls are a part of it and their name. And that's about it. Um, <coughs> So sometimes when trying to find stuff, but like I said, I've had times where it's better to go to the cheat engine source and then just, you know, you just got to know Pascal um, to get at least a basic understanding that can be really helpful. Uh, but for the most part, the, the stuff will help you out a bit. Um, but any of the forms and controls that are kind of more pure Lua, it works pretty well with. Um, but it's just some of the underlying stuff with Cheat Engine, just it's set up in a different way. Basically it's written in the, either Pascal or C or something like that and it's just not exposed. It You know, everything isn't exposed to Lua in the same way a pure Lua object would be. Um, but even when you make a form, it's still falling back to some of these underlying things. So it's kind of hit and miss sometimes with this wind control one. Um, the O print is a little better, but it's just, it gives you a lot of information. Sometimes you don't always need all of it. Um, but it can if you're just not sure what all functions are a part of the main form or any form for that matter. Um, you can kind of go through it and kind of get an idea of what's going on there. But like I said, sometimes you just got to know that, you know, a table in this case for a user data it's actually a property and thus it's going to have setters and getters it may only have a getter and not a setter so you just have to poke around and play with it and see if it throws an error and tells you that you know it's read only or that kind of thing um, but I just wanted to give some idea of how I go about exploring things and figuring things out um, and this is one of them um, and like I said, I do use that inspect.lua module too sometimes because it just works a little better. Um, but I just like this oprint function because it just helps me. Um, and you can kind of see what it actually does with like a pure table. So if we just make a simple table here. Go ahead and go back 
to O print and print this table, we'll see that it can be useful, but again, anything that's set to nil just it won't exist anymore. But that's more Lua than just the function itself. Um, there might be a way to actually get that to know that that was set to nil, but um, I'm not actually 100% sure on that. <laughs> uh, you'd have to probably ask somebody that knows a lot more about Lua than me. Um, anyway, but it'll still just give you an idea of what's in a table. Um, in this kind of context, for me, it's more for debugging. This way I can go ahead and look at an object partway through um, and see if something got cleared, if I screwed up the code somewhere and have a typo and didn't set a property I thought I set correctly, or it's getting overwritten somewhere, I can tell, okay, this isn't actually set how I thought it was set. You know, if I expected name to be something else or spelled correctly, um, I would know that that's the reason why I'm able to make that fix and, and change it. Um, and it just, at least for me, it helps. Uh, it's, you know, up to you, whatever you think works better, of course, because you're going to be the one doing it. But uh, I just wanted to share this kind of in the beginning because I think being ready to explore is a big part of it. Um, I know that was a lot of how I learned because, like, when I first started with uh, using Cheat Engine, most of the wiki was just kind of empty. I actually added a lot of wiki entries just because I got tired of digging through the forum and just reading the same things over and over and over again to try and find something I forgot or couldn't remember how to use or completely forgot. You know, I knew there was a function that did something, but I couldn't remember what it was. And I'd have to go digging and digging and digging. Um, and then also the help file, as helpful as it is, I didn't like its format. Um, but, and so that was just something I had to do was just dig through things and play with functions until I understood how they worked. Um, that's why even I'll admit the, uh, the wiki isn't a hundred percent just cause cheat engine does get updated and this doesn't always get updated. Um, but it does seem like after adding as much as I have more and more people are updating it more often. Um, so it's kind of use it at your own discretion. Um, I will admit when looking at Lua stuff, I always go to the cheat engine Lua file in the cheat engine directory first. Um, as much as I do like this format better, um, the cheat engine Lua file is just more bulletproof. It's, you know, and it's easier to just go control F and type in what I, you know, a keyword I'm looking for memory record class. If I don't remember, all the functions that it has or whatever the case is I can then search real quick it'll take me right to it and I can find the info I need um, but if you're first learning it you know coming to the wiki isn't a terrible idea just to get a general layout of the land and kind of know where to start um, but at any rate that was kind of really all I wanted to go over on this video and so next up, I'm thinking we'll go over my um, the package loader and table package searcher. Um, these are some functions, and like these actually end up getting included in every table script. Uh, oh, didn't need those. That's not what I'm looking for. Down here. Okay. Um, and these actually we'll go over it more in the next video, but just kind of wanted to give a highlight of what's coming up next. Um, and this way, you, that's where I'm able to just use that require function again. And whether it's a table file or a local file, it can load those. And it does do it based on some variables I I like to use. Um, release mode is kind of the main one. So that way it knows whether to search for table files first or to look for local files first just to speed things up. So that way it's not going through every searcher in the list and then coming back to the table files when it's in release mode it'll in theory load a little faster I've never timed it to tell what exactly happens there you know which ones or why you know how fast it is but I would suspect that it'd be a little faster if it starts with looking for table files and finds those first 
Um, but at any rate, that'll be the next video, and we'll go from there. But so that's the end of this video. Um, there will be some links in the um, description section. Uh, first, I've got to post it. If you get the tutorial right away, um, you'll have to wait a minute for me to get those links because I've got to post the video, then post something in the tutorial section of uh, the Fearless Cheat Engine forum. And then that's where these code snippets will be. And then put that back in the description afterwards. So if you've ever noticed it's not there, you might just give it a little bit and it'll show up. Um, but that's kind of all I wanted to add. But anyway, have fun. So I just wanted to add, um, sorry for the extra heavy typing. <laughs> uh, kind of forgot that I had learned the first go around that I, I needed to place my microphone in kind of a specific spot, as well as actually put it on some freaking styrofoam to help insulate it from uh, vibrations. Um, so hopefully the next video you won't hear the typing as loud as it was, because I, I didn't even notice until it was came time to edit. Um, but hopefully that'll be better and we'll I'll figure it out again as I go. Uh, anyway, moving on.